So we are going to use the chain rule in a particular, um, a particular context, which is where the trig bit has powers. And I've written the tip here that when you're differentiating a trig function to a power, you should always rewrite it using a bracket first. And I still do this to this day. I still rewrite these things in this particular form because it helps me to differentiate it in a clearer way. What I mean by rewriting this, you know how we write the squared next to the sine part rather than at the end? What I actually mean is rewriting it so that you have it as this, like that. So you're going to rewrite it so the power is in its traditional place of outside the end, but there must be some brackets that we've got here. So really, what this first question is asking is I've actually got a blah squared that I've got. And we know that blah squareds differentiate to what? Two blah. They just differentiate to two blah, and then we'll multiply it by the derivative of blah. So it's going to be two blah. That's just me expecting what it would differentiate to. But I need to, need to multiply by the derivative of blah. And the derivative of blah, in this case, what blah differentiates to is cos. So sine x differentiates to cos x. So let's just go through that one more time. We rewrote sine squared x as sine of x squared, which is blah squared. Blah squared differentiates to 2 blah. We've pulled the power down and reduced the power by 1. But we also had to multiply by the derivative of blah. When I say the derivative of, I mean differentiate blah. And blah sine x differentiates to cos x. Does anyone think they could simplify 2 sine x cos x? It is sine 2x. You don't have to do that last stage, but trigonometry and differentiation are going to start merging the topics. Okay, They're going to start all happening together. So the double angle formula there is being applied to show that the derivative of sine squared x is sine 2x. You would never memorize that. You would always do this method. It just so happens that it differentiates to this thing that we've got. Okay, So we're going to try now the same with this one. And like I said in this tip, the first thing we're going to do, and that I still do to this day, is I rewrite it with cubed at the end. So this is like blah cubed. And we know that blah cubed will go to 3 blah squared. And I'm going to multiply it by the derivative of blah, which is minus sine x. So overall, when I write this, I'm going to have negative 3. And don't matter which, uh, which order you write this. Sine x. And I'm going to change it back to cos squared x. I'm going to put the squared in the correct place rather than doing it with the brackets there. So this is my tip for doing any powers that you have with trigonometry. So I'm going to give you a couple of minutes to do either one or both of these probably just a minute to try doing at least one of them. And then we're going to do these bottom two here together and see what answers you get for these ones with the powers, OK? So have a go at those two that are on the bottom. If you're not sure, just have a think. And then in about a minute, we'll go through both of them, see if you can get at least one done. about halfway, about 30 seconds more. Okay, if you haven't quite finished them, don't worry. I'm just going to see how they go. So I'm going to rewrite this one as minus 5 cos x to the power of 6. So really what I've got is minus 5 blah to the power of 6, which we know will differentiate to. 
well, I'll bring down the 6, so I will get minus 30 cos x to the power of 5 multiplied by the derivative of blah, which is minus sine x. So the negatives cancel, and I get 30 sine x. I don't matter if you do sine or cos first. Cos to the power of 5x. So when you differentiate the powers of trig, you always get an extra thing popping out at the beginning. Like here, we got an extra cos. Here, we got an extra sine. Here, we got an extra sine as well. OK? And then the last one that we've got, if I was going to rewrite this, this is minus sine x to the power of minus 2. That's minus blah to the power of minus 2. So if I were to differentiate this, the negative times negative 2 is just 2. So it would be 2 blah to the power of minus 3. And I will then multiply it by the derivative of sine x, which is cos x. So I get 2 cos x sine minus 3x. And obviously, you could then begin by writing that if you wanted to go further with this, you could say to yourself, well, that is 2 cos x, and you could replace sine to the power of minus 3x. What do you think you could replace sine to the power of minus 3x with using reciprocal trig? Sec or cosec? Because we don't normally have negative powers. This doesn't mean inverse sine. This means sine to the power, uh, 1 over sine cubed. So if you wanted to, you could replace it like this. And then the question might then lead you down a path of doing some of the work you've been doing in Mr. Udin's lesson. Okay? But this is where, for now, we can stop at this stage.